everybody, and welcome to our very last week of Light It Up. During Light It Up, we have been shedding some light on the most incredible story ever, the story of Jesus' birth. We're going to hear the rest of that story today in just a little bit, but first I want to ask you a question. A lot of times we talk about the Christmas gifts that we want to get, but we don't talk much about the gifts that we give. What were some of the gifts that you gave people this year? Wow, those are really cool gifts. Great job. Here's another question for you. Did anyone give a Christmas gift to a baby? It can be really tough to figure out what a good gift is for a baby. There are some gifts that are perfect for babies and some that, well, just aren't. In today's Bible story, the gifts that were given may have seemed a little bit strange for a baby, but they were actually perfect for this baby. Let's jump into our story by opening our first clues now. All right, our first clue, it says, I'm invisible during the day. My friends say I'm gassy. Actually, I'm one big ball of gas. Twinkle, twinkle. All right, now those are our three clues. Any guesses of what our clue actually is? Let's count down and light up our box. Are you ready? Three, two, one. It's a star. The Bible says the wise men from the east saw a special star in the sky. Does anyone know how many wise men there were? A lot of people think there were three wise men, but the Bible doesn't say how many there were. There could have been a lot more than that. The wise men were also known as Magi. The Magi knew all of the prophecies and stories about the Savior being born. They were also experts in astronomy, the study of stars. So when they saw this miraculous star in the sky, they knew that it had to be for baby Jesus. And there was no way they were gonna miss out on seeing him. So they gathered some of their gifts and followed the star for 800 to 900 miles. That's one long road trip. Let's see if our next present can shed some more light on the story. Here are our next clues. You can find me in both checkers and chess. That's your first hint. I sit in the biggest chair. And the third hint, it says, I'm a ruler, but I don't measure things. Any ideas of what you think it might be? All right, let's light it up. Are you ready? Three, two, one. It's a king. At that same time, there was a king named Herod. Every time I say King Herod, I want you to give me an evil laugh like this. <laughs> Let's give it a try. King Herod was an evil king who loved power more than anything. When he heard that the wise men were passing through Jerusalem looking for a baby who was born to be king of the Jews, King Herod got super jealous. He mistakenly thought that Jesus had come to take over his job as king, but he was wrong. Jesus' kingdom wasn't for the world of the world. He came to be king over people's hearts, not king over the land. King Herod did not understand this though, so he came up with an evil plan. Let's figure out what it was by reading our next set of clues. All right, the first one says, You'll find me on your face. Hmm. I often show up in pictures. And you can't say cheese without me. Any guesses? Let's light up our next present. Ready? Three, two, one. It's a smile. Unfortunately, it's a fake smile. Can you show me your best fake smile? <laughs> That's pretty good. King Herod secretly called for the wise men and put on his best fake smile. He pretended that he was so excited to find this king of the Jews. He said, go and find this kid. And when you do, let me know. I really want to worship him too. Do you think that's really what the king wanted to do though? No way. What do you think he really wanted to do? 
That's right. He wanted to have Jesus killed. Let's shed some light on the next part of our story with our next clue. Are you ready? All right, it says, you can find me in a pan, but you can't cook me. I'll make you rich. And the last one says, I'm the top prize at the Olympics. What do you think it could be? Well, let's find out. Are you ready? Count down with me. Three, two, one, light it up. It's gold. When the wise men were finished listening to the king, they continued to follow the star all the way to where Jesus was staying. When they went inside the house, they saw Jesus with his mom, Mary, and they immediately bowed down and worshiped Jesus. Then they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, which when they were finished, the wise men took a long trip back home, but God warned them not to tell King Herod about where baby Jesus was. So they took a different route home and the evil king never found Jesus. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't eat that! Why not? It's a perfectly good cookie. It's not just an ordinary cookie. I paid $650 for this cookie. Look at this. Taylor Quick took a bite out of this cookie. Taylor Quick? You mean the world's biggest music star? Yup. Uh, you mean the pop sensation that wrote songs like Bad Flood and Glove Story? Yeah, and don't forget about my favorite song, Shake and Cough. Come on, David. What makes you think that Taylor Quick took a bite out of this cookie? Well, it's because of this. Take a look. It's an official certificate of authenticity to prove it. Let me see this. This certificate hereby verifies that this cookie was bitten by Taylor Quack. Who is Taylor Quack? Give me that. Doesn't say Taylor Quack. This certificate hereby verifies that this cookie was bitten by Taylor Quack. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Journey Today Show. My name is Corey. And I'm David. So, how does it taste? Like sugary disappointment. I don't get it. I thought for sure that Taylor Quick had taken a bite of this cookie. And who in the world is Taylor Quack? Well, according to the internet, he's a dancing duck who you can hire to perform at your birthday or retirement party. I paid $650 for a cookie that was half eaten by a dancing duck? And now I've got duck germs in my mouth too! <laughs> then why do you keep eating it? <laughs> because it's so delicious! Come on, David! What in the world possessed you to buy a cookie for $650? That's crazy! I know, man! It was a big mistake. It's just that I'm a huge Taylor Quick fan. No one loves Taylor more than me. And when I saw I could own something that Taylor herself touched, man, I couldn't pass it up. Yeah, you know what that sounds like? Hero worship. Hero worship? What's that? That's when we honor and adore people we look up to more than we should. And I totally get it. There are some athletes and celebrities that I'm crazy about, but I have to be careful because there's only one person who is truly deserving of our worship. Oh yeah, I think I know where you're going with this. And you're right. Sometimes it's easy to honor and adore the wrong people or, or the wrong things. Seriously, it is. But in today's true Bible story, there's a group of men who got it totally right. They honored and adored a king, but not just some ordinary king. It was the king of kings. Wow. They sounded like some really wise men. Um, yeah, that's exactly what they were. They were the wise men. 
Oh, you're talking about the wise men from the Christmas story. Yeah, you got it. I love that story. Hey, you know what? I think we should read it for ourselves. Let's do this. In just a second, press pause on the video, then open your Bible and read the verses on the screen. When you're finished, press play, and we'll see you back here. Isn't that an amazing story? These wise men traveled hundreds of miles just to visit a baby. Seriously, but get this, a lot of times we hear about the three wise men, but the Bible doesn't really say how many there were. We just know that there were more than one. Right, sometimes people assume there were three of them because they gave Jesus three gifts. Hey, speaking of the three gifts, didn't those gifts seem really strange? I mean, Jesus was a little kid. You'd think they would have brought him some diapers or a onesie or a stuffed donkey. But instead, they brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Would a baby even want those gifts? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. I think it's challenge time. Sweet. What are we going to do? Okay, how about this? Jesus was probably about two years old when the wise men showed up and gave him their gifts. So let's get a little kid in here and see what he likes best. Wait, you mean that we have a real two-year-old that's gonna be here? Uh, well, he's one and a half, but close enough. His name is Graham. When the challenge starts, we'll each offer Graham a gift and we'll see whose gift he goes for. Okay, this sounds really fun. Count me in. All right, let's get set up and do this thing. Okay, everybody, this is my friend Graham right here. We're gonna offer him up a couple different gifts and see which one he likes better. You ready to go, Corey? I'm ready. All right. Are you ready? He's ready. Yeah, he's ready to he's go. Ready. Let's, let's go. offer him up the first gift. Here we go. Round one. All right, Graham, would dump you truck. want the gold coins? Or, or do you the want the dump truck? The dump truck. Do you want the gold coins, buddy? What do you want? Do you want the you want the gold coins, buddy? Oh, he's trying to decide. He's Which trying one to decide. Want? The gold he wants coins. the gold coins. He loves the gold. Oh, wait, no, oh, no, oh, he's going for the dump going truck. The dump truck. He's going he for wants the dump, the dump truck, truck too. Truck. Yes. Oh, it is. A tie. <laughs> he wants the toy and the money. Okay. Round two. Frankincense. Or the passy with the giraffe Dude, the baby wants the You want the baby? You, no! He did! Yes! The frankincense, though! No, he didn't even consider the frankincense! The baby wants the passy! But I brought you frankincense! <laughs> He's okay. so adorable. Well, clearly, he wanted the passy more. <laughs> okay, going on right. to the next round now. Right. Last round. All right, does the baby want a bottle of myrrh or Buddy Bob? Yeah, do you want the, do you want the do you want myrrh? Do you want Buddy Bob or the myrrh? Do you want the myrrh? What do you what want, do you want do you buddy? Want the myrrh? Oh, I brought you a nice bottle of myrrh. I brought you a nice bottle of myrrh. Buddy's a robot. What? Buddy Bot. What? You want Buddy Bot? What? Yeah. He chose Buddy, Buddy Bot. <laughs> oh, but I traveled a long way with this myrrh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. He chose Buddy Bot over the myrrh. Because he's a baby. Well, guys. <laughs> I just want to thank you so much, Graham, for coming here and helping us figure out which gifts were better. Can everybody say thank you to Graham? And bye, Graham! Bye, Graham! We'll see you later. Bye. Well, I guess that answers our question. Babies aren't really that into gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, he, he did kind of like the gold. Uh, yeah, it, it was a tie between the gold and the dump truck. Yeah, but it kind of makes you wonder, why in the world would the wise men give those things to baby Jesus? I mean, were they just really bad gift givers? Great question. I mean, it's hard to imagine 
what a baby would do with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I mean, they can't play with it or sleep with it or eat it. But when you know more about these gifts, it makes more sense and tells you something really cool about Jesus. That's right. So check this out. Gold, as you probably know, is a very valuable metal, and it could have brought Jesus' family a lot of things. More than that, it was a symbol of power and royalty. Right. And frankincense was made from dried tree sap. And when you burned it, it made a sweet smell. People burned it when they were making sacrifices to God. Yeah, and myrrh was also made from dried tree sap. It was a spice that could be used as a pain medicine, or it could be used to prepare people to be buried when they died. You see, these were gifts that people used to honor a king. It was the wise men's way of saying they knew that Jesus wasn't just an ordinary baby. He was the king of the Jews, a sweet-smelling sacrifice to God who would suffer and die to take away the sins of the world. That's so awesome. Honestly, that helps me understand why those gifts were actually so special. But you know what? There was one more gift the wise men gave Jesus that I think is even more special, and we can read about that in our Bible verse for today. The verse says, Where is the child who has been born to be the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose. Now we have come to worship him. Matthew 2, 2. Hey, I get it now. The greatest gift that the wise men brought baby Jesus was the gift of worship. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh were gifts that you gave to a king. But worship is a gift that you give to God. Right. When the wise men bowed down and worshiped baby Jesus, it was their way of saying that Jesus is God. You know, I think that brings up a really good question. Why do you think Jesus is worthy of our worship? In other words, what's so special about Jesus? Press pause and discuss. what I find so encouraging about what we just learned. We might not be able to give Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but we can worship him just like the wise men did. Dude, that is so true. When you worship Jesus, it means that you show and tell him that you love him with your whole life. And best of all, you don't have to travel hundreds of miles like the wise men did to worship Jesus. You can do it anywhere and at any time. Also, you don't have to pay $650 to worship Jesus. That's a reference to my Taylor Quack cookie, isn't it? Dude, don't remind me of that. That was such a huge mistake. You got it, buddy. Hey, everyone, thanks for joining us. We had so much fun hanging out with you. For sure. Let's do it again next week. Until then, we love you. Your church loves you. And most of all, Jesus loves you. Amen. Bye, everybody. Bye. Taylor Quack, I want my money back. When you think about it, gold, frankincense, and myrrh weren't really that weird. They were actually pretty cool gifts. But there was one other gift they brought that was even cooler. Our Bible verse for today tells us what it was. Let's take a look at it. It says, Where is the child who has been born to the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose. Now we have come to worship him. Matthew 2, 2. The first and greatest gift that the wise men brought baby Jesus was the gift of worship. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh were gifts that were you gave to a king, but worship is a gift that you can give to God. When the wise men bowed down and worshiped baby Jesus, it was their way of saying that Jesus is God. And here's the best part. We might not be able to give Jesus gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but we can worship him just like the wise men did. When you worship Jesus, 
It means that you show and tell him that you love him with your whole life. And singing is one way we can do that. Will you stand and worship with me now? Singing is one way we can worship, but there are others too. Praying, writing to Jesus, reading your Bible, and drawing are other ways you can worship Him. As you go throughout your week, take some time to show God your worship. I love getting to spend today with you guys, and I hope you have an amazing week and that we will see you again next week. See you later!